there. I decided to do a video response for this post, so I'm just going to get started. Uh, for the Rogers reading, I found it very interesting, and after reading the six conditions, I do think that each of those are um, necessary for change to take place. Um, firstly, like with the first condition, there has to be a relationship there where a place where someone can come to express their wants and needs and concerns um, in order for them to work on changing. Uh, I think that the second condition is very important. Um, I that the client has to recognize their incongruence and more important, like they have to recognize it and they have to want to, they have to want to change, have the desire to change. I thought that it was interesting where Roger said that the client, when the client is not aware of the incongruence, he's only vulnerable to anxiety. I thought that was an interesting um, way to put it, um, and which I agree. Um, and the, the second condition just kind of reminds me of the phrase, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Um, like in the end, it is up to the horse, um, but in this situation, the, uh, the client counselor said, it is up to the client to, um, like they have to make the decision to change. The third through sixth um, conditions I thought were very interesting because I was able to put myself in the perspective of the counselor, and um, I think those are will be very important to remember when I am a counselor working with future clients. Um, I really like where he said that the counselor should not be evaluative. They need to accept the good, the bad, the ugly, the messy, um, all all parts that the counsel the client is expressing in order, you know, to help them um, move towards the change that they are seeking. The client should be Sorry, the counselor should be real and transparent. I like um, the words that um, Rogers used in the video. Um, and with the sixth, the sixth um, condition is, I thought it was really important how, you know, the counselor needs to be all these things, but also the client needs to be able to see and to feel those, um, the transparency, the realness, um, and the positive regard and empathy from the client, from the counselor. Um, and I also like in that section how he talked about empathy and it reminded me of from in class where we, um, the counselor's role is to be empathetic rather than sympathetic to feel with instead of feel for. Um, it just kind of popped back in my head as I was reading over the, pa the paper. Um, with the Gloria tapes, I did see lots of um, consistencies with person-centered counseling. Um, first, like right off the bat, Gloria could see Roger's realness. Um, the relationship was there where she was able to express her concerns from the get-go. Um, and Roger's, he was not evaluating her. He was accepting she was pouring out all these details about her relationship and her desires for her wanting to... Um, you know, do the right things for her daughter, and she was able. She was able to express these things with Rogers accepting them rather than you know evaluating her. Um, he did not lead her or pers to an answer or persuade her. He often she would say something and he would summarize it, and um, that would kind of lead her to make her own decisions. Like at one point in the video, um, he asked her, "What is it that you are wanting me to tell you?" and she said that she would, she wants him to, she would like him to tell her to go ahead and, you know, to be honest and take the risk. So she was kind of answering her own questions and setting her, you know, roadmap up for the change that she was desiring with her current situation. Um, so, yeah, I thought that yeah, with the Gloria Gloria Tapes and Carl Rogers, um, the reading, I could definitely see the congruence between um, person-centered counseling and her, um, and the counseling session.